Hi, good afternoon. My name is Swati. I work with the Almond Board of California, and um, I've, I've had a very good time listening to all of you this afternoon. Thank you for very informative presentations. My question is, actually I have two questions, and they're both regarding the D.A.R.E. trial, eh? Um, <laughs> first one being, uh, was, I, was I correct in understanding that in the combo arm, you actually combined the time for both resistance and uh, aerobic? That's, that's not the question, that's just an understanding part of it. Yeah, it's okay. not my trial, but yeah, that's what they did. Okay, okay, and, um, and w w what, what is your opinion in terms of if they had kept the time constant to 135 minutes and then combined, say, you know, made it half aerobic and half um, resistance, where do you think the datum may have ended up? I, I suspect it would have looked a lot like what we saw in Heart D. You know, because that's what we did. That's what we saw. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so maybe I missed that. Part. Yeah. So I mean, they had they had much larger changes in hemoglobin A1C. I suspect it would have came closer to ours, but I'm just guessing. Um, but yeah. Okay. And then the second question was more about uh, combining or planning to combine maybe a dietary intervention with uh, one of these trials to see how that may or may not work. Yeah. I. I, I I actually think that's a great idea. Um, getting something like that funded is next to impossible, unfortunately. Um, so much of this is not driven by science, it's driven by what you think you can sell. And um, that would be nearly impossible to sell, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, it's, it seems to me that a, at a trial like that, uh, you know, combining a, maybe a Mediterranean diet, you know, which has a lot of evidence would be something that would be, you know, very attractive. Again, the, the, the key is going to be who's going to fund it. Sarma yeah. Davi from Toronto. I just want to thank all of you for a fantastic presentation. Um, I did my master's in exercise physiology, so I was so excited to see um, exercise talked about here. Um, I have two questions from Dr. Church. Um, first one is that, uh, so your main outcome that you looked at was hemoglobin A1C. And you mentioned that a lot of your, the subjects were on medication. So my first question is, what was compliance for medication? And second question is that you mentioned hemoglobin A1C was measured every month, but that's not, to my understanding, validated. Hemoglobin A1C is supposed to be measured every three months. So if you could uh, answer those two, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, that's a great point. I really screwed that up. So um, <laughs> we took a very different stance than they did in DARE, and our stance was their physicians manage their medications. We don't tell them anything about their medications, and we very closely track their medications. And what we actually saw is in the combination group, they reduced their medication use. Uh, in the control group, they increased their medication use. This is why it's such a joy to do study in people with type 2 diabetes. And, you know, yeah, we tested every month. It wasn't, we weren't following clinical guidelines. We were doing the best research design. And there was a safety element too, there was a safety mandate. We had to make sure that we weren't hurting the control group. So that's why there was both monthly testing and laboratory testing, which was at the beginning at the end. Hanna Kaleova, Czech Republic. Uh, thank you very much for wonderful presentation. So what about interval training? Is it more effective in, in increasing physical, physical fitness and in improving uh, diabetes management? Yeah. You must say there's not so many studies done on this one, so that's why I was one of the first really looking at particular diet, type 2 diabetes. Uh, what we mainly, our focus had mainly been that, uh, that we could keep the people uh, and the patients continue the training afterwards. And if you were using too much time, you know, just like when you have to go to a, a nutritionist and, and the people get many good ideas, but how to maintain it afterwards, that's the problem. And here is only, you know, this is three times a week, half an hour each time. Then you're done. Yeah. You know, I think most, of, in my opinion, most of the, the exercise experts in the world think that high in intensity interval training, a hit, is better than moderate continuous training. And certainly there's lots of small studies 
that look at either just fitness, improvement in fitness, or some other measure of cardiovascular structure and function, all typically show that the HIT does better than, than the moderate continuous training. The problem is, and we have a, a, a state-of-the-art review that's going to be out next month in circulation research with the three of us and eight other authors that are all pretty big name exercise people. And we discussed all of this, this but the fact is, is that there's no trials that have looked at, at, at major clinical events with, with HIT. And no trials have looked at long-term efficacy and safety. And so we, a couple of my co-authors and I did a, a review in heart failure just a couple of years ago of all the trials of HIT versus moderate continuous training in heart failure. And we came up with about 110 patients in the world's literature that was published two years ago. So there's not a robust amount of, 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 of long-term data with hard clinical endpoints. And without that, it's pretty hard to make a guideline to say high intensity interval training should be the standard. I would predict that it would come out better, but I don't think we, we know that for sure. I don't agree with him. <laughs> you know, we don't treat high blood pressure with one medication, and we don't treat diabetes with one medication. These are now two and three medications, diseases commonly. And I think I view exercise as medication, and I view weight training as one type of medication, and I view long, slow aerobic as another type of medication, I view higher intensity as another type of medication. I think the best program combines all of them. I don't think that HIT is the best program, or LSD, long, slow distance, is the best program, or weight training is the best program. I think in the perfect world, they're all the best programs. A, a, a program that incorporates all of them is because that way you're stimulating all the different physiological mechanisms and maximizing benefits. I have to continue to correct my junior colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> I know the best exercise program. It's the one you will do. Hi there, John Stephen Piper, University of Toronto. I just want to thank the panel. It was just really an outstanding session, really inspirational. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment because it came up. Uh, we're actually going to hear on Friday about the PREDIMED Plus trial, which is the, pre the Mediterranean diet plus exercise, the rationale and design for that. So that is ongoing. They're still recruiting. And we will be having a planning session, so this is just plugging our program, uh, for the Enhanced Portfolio Lifestyle Trial, where we're combining the portfolio cholesterol-lowering diet with low glycemic index and load with exercise uh, for, right now we have a pilot study that'll be three years looking at atherosclerosis with MRI and, and ultrasound measurements. And we're hoping to recruit centers, including the centers of our esteemed uh, colleagues at the panel, to participate in the, the larger uh, clinical events trial. Just a comment, thank you. There was another one up here, yes. Anastasia Thanopoulou from Greece, thank you. Uh, what did you see in the self-monitoring, uh, uh, blood sugar monitoring during the resistance uh, training days and versus the aerobic uh, training days? Um, so, we, we didn't, that was, the way we did that was we would check it before they exercised, and if it was too low or too high, then we, we either held them out or restarted it. We, we didn't, it just was too much data to look at that, to look at the self-monitoring stuff. I mean, we had close to 300 individuals to help have three or four self-monitoring. Um, what I wish we had looked at, the problem with monitoring self-monitoring is everybody lies to you. And they're all gonna tell you they're self-monitoring in the beginning, and they're all gonna tell you they're self-monitoring in the middle, and they're all gonna tell you they're self-monitoring at the end, and we know they're not. Um, so we don't have very good self-monitoring data. That's the bottom line. That's a great question. Okay, and maybe this will be our last question. Thank you. Um, Flora Wen from Toronto. Uh, thanks very much for your talk, and I very enjoyed very much. Just have a question. When you put, put your subjects on different treatment um, regimens, did you look at their background diet um, to see whether, um, say, macronutrient composition would differ or if they actually help if they were on a certain type of um, macronutrient distribution, or it doesn't really matter? You know, it's, it's, it's not, we do, and we do the best we can, but it's, 
most people know in this room, unless you have doubly labeled water or people come live in your institution, people lie about what they eat. And, 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 we, and when we did Heart D, we were at Pennington, so we had some of the best nutritionists in the world working on this. Um, who weren't typically part of our exercise team. And as usual, we saw everybody reporting 500 less calories consumed um, over the course of the nine months. So the, the nutrition data, I, I've never seen it not just border on fiction or to be <laughs> anything other than complete fiction. And we're, we got a big eating trial going on now. We're using W label water and it's totally awesome. But that doesn't tell you what they're eating. It just tells you they're eating more, they're eating less. Unfortunately. Dr. Levy, did you have a paper on that published yesterday? Mayo Clinic Proceedings, <laughs> June 9th, 2015, talking about the, uh, the dietary data and uh, how they're utilized in the new guidelines. Ed Archer is first author. There's your reading, I guess, for, for this evening, perhaps. Um, so I'll just remind you, meet in the lobby at 6 o'clock this evening for the University of Toronto tour, and meet in the lobby at 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow for the Moore Park Ravine tour. And please don't go. Here's Dr. Stephen Piper. No, just to modify that, um, for those of you that want to get some exercise after this wonderful session, we meet at 6 o'clock, and there will be the tour going out to do the insulin tour for the University of Toronto. Okay.